Hi, I'm Raf Wilson, Vice President of Artistic Planning for the Seattle Symphony. Welcome to this Goethe pop-up video. In June this year, we planned a major project to celebrate the 250th anniversary of the birth of Beethoven. Unfortunately, COVID-19 took a hand and we've had to postpone those plans. But this is a good moment to talk about the new pieces and the themes uh, of our festival. And to do that, I'm joined by Mary Lynch, our principal oboe, and composer Chuck Corey, who wrote a piece for our celebration, Together This Journey. Hi, both. Hello. Hello. Uh, Chuck, tell us about your piece and what, what you imagined the piece would be. Uh, beginning the project, I didn't have much of, a, much of an idea of where the piece was going to go, which is very unusual for me. Uh, it's the opposite of the way I tend to work as a composer. And so we had a series of workshops uh, where participants from the Northwest Center and from the Seattle Symphony, uh, usually working in teams or groups, came up with ideas for structuring the piece, musical material, other ideas. And I gathered that material to put into the piece and along the way discovered that there was a narrative that sort of came together of watching these participants interact, uh, watching these people create and develop friendships that sort of became the, uh, the underneath layer, the structure of the piece. And so tell us a bit about that process and about, well, firstly about working with, with Best Buddies. How did you approach that? That began uh, before I was involved, I believe, back in, last summer. And uh, there had been discussion about working with the Seattle Symphony to create a community group project of some kind. And that was about as far as we got. Uh, and I said I was interested and in, let's see what our partner might be. And a couple months after that, um, we started talking with the Northwest Center and Best Buddies. I, I think it was just Northwest Center at the time and Best Buddies was sort of still a project in development. And we gathered together to talk about a way to create a piece that would include members of their community uh, in the process of creating the piece and uh, that would help lead to a longer term relationship between Northwest Center and Best Buddies and the Seattle Symphony. Yeah, and for those who don't know, tell us a little bit about what it actually is, the concept, the idea of Best Buddies and, and, what, and how it connects with Northwest Centre. So Best Buddies is uh, an organisation that pairs people who are dealing with disabilities in their lives with friends uh, who perhaps are not. And so it's a, a way to connect people, to develop friendships and expand a community of people uh, that the community of people with disabilities have access to, have relationships with, and broaden that community. Uh, whereas Northwest Center is, uh, serves to sort of take people who are dealing with disabilities and help them find uh, work, work on job placement and other issues like that, uh, getting them into fulfilling careers and uh, opening pathways to show that abilities can still work in all of these fields successfully and, and contribute to the community within that workplace. Yeah. And so Mary, that's where you come in a bit because you took part in this as well. Can you tell us about your, your path with Best Buddies? Sure. Um, I first heard about this project at a lunch and learn session at the Seattle Symphony. We have these occasional sessions, um, which are just informational presentations over the lunch break about um, various projects going on at the symphony. So I went to one where Erica Brody, the, the head of this Best Buddies chapter, um, spoke about that program and I felt really drawn to it. Um, I'm also a member of the education committee. Um, I'm one of the musicians on that committee. So I try in general to be as involved as possible in all of the projects we have going on in that regard. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't know exactly what I was getting into when I first signed on to this. Um, I definitely didn't expect to become such quick friends with my buddy, Michaela. Tell us about that. It's been amazing. Um, She's, I mean, she's really a friend. We text every few days, FaceTime occasionally. We actually FaceTimed a bit this afternoon 
because I told her I was going to come and talk a little bit about what we've been doing. And she's just, she's really fun, has a huge personality. Um, and yeah, I enjoyed talking with her and hanging out with her. And, and do you, did you make music together? Is that how, how this worked as you, as, as I guess you were kind of contributing to the, to the material that might go into the piece? Was that a musical process or were other art forms? How did it go? Um, it was both. So at the first session, we, um, we started exploring the concept of inclusivity and what does that really mean? Um, and we used illustrations and also just writing words to kind of brainstorm together. Um, and then at the next session, we, we had um, a compositional workshop where we had a bunch of percussion instruments, um, like a few little xylophones, bells, drums, and we all sort of improvised making sounds together and listening and responding. And at the end of that workshop, we filled out um, this form about our vision for the piece. Um, there were a variety of questions and by the end of that workshop, um, something specific and unique really started to take shape, which was cool to, to be a part of. Amazing. And so that, I guess, uh, so Chuck, that sort of fed back to you or you were there also taking part, is that how it worked? Correct. So I was at the workshops sort of setting out, um, I had worked with the education office at the symphony to come up with a guideline for structuring the session so that I would get uh, as much information as I could, whatever our goal was for the day. So we had one where we're trying to talk about the form of the piece, one where we're trying to create themes and motives uh, and ideas that can come in and out, discover what instruments we liked as a group or were interested in featuring at certain moments. And then over these sessions, which usually ran about two hours, we would do some compositional activities, some group activities, some more informal recreational activities, which gave friendships sort of a chance to grow. And, uh, and that became really what the piece was about, which was not what I had anticipated at the beginning, was watching all these friendships grow sort of in real time, uh, which is a strange thing to be an observer of in any situation. Usually that's something a little more intimate. Uh, but I got to see that process unfold and at the same time watch as people found little scales on a xylophone that they liked or discovered that their favorite of these three drums was the largest one because of a particular sound it made. Uh, everybody was very drawn to the sleigh bells that they had access to. And so we discovered some instrumentation in these workshops and I was there watching and taking notes on that. And then there were also forms for everyone to fill out, uh, like Mary was saying, where you could say, you know, here's the material we were improvising and the way we are thinking about it, it's this material is strong or weak. This material is for higher pitched or lower pitched instruments or, or both. Uh, and sort of to flesh out the idea that we created in this improvisation. And then I took that back uh, and expanded that to fit into the full orchestra. That sounds like an amazing process and quite, and quite complicated. Um, I guess the question is, having all of that material and to, and to go through that process, um, how, did you, uh, how did you tie Beethoven into that, into that process and that concept? Because that's another layer of complexity, I guess, for you. That was, uh, I had thought initially, because this piece was gonna be paired up with Beethoven four and Beethoven five, and I had thought it might be interesting to draw, quote some of the material, take a look at, um, some ideas of orchestration or, or something like that. And the further I got into the composition, the more I felt like uh, it really wasn't Beethoven's place. This was something about this small community that we had that represented sort of the larger community of, of Seattle, of Northwest Center, of the orchestra. Uh, and so the farther I got into the compositional process, the more I had to sort of remove Beethoven from it, uh, from the piece itself. But I was always thinking about this work is going to be heard first on the program, and then second is Beethoven four, then there's intermission in Beethoven five. So uh, it was written sort of in a way that I thought could lead into some of these monumental scores that are, you know, orchestras the world over are tre treasure and cherish and perform regularly. 
that I wanted to create something that would lead into that type of listening environment. Yeah, yeah. And it's kind of, I guess, it, when I think of Beethoven or our, our image of Beethoven, let's say, he is, um, I can imagine it would be a challenge because, you know, there is the, the quintessential romantic hero who is, you know, a nonconformist, maybe a bit of a loner, you know, um, how, how to make that music uh, connect and make community, which it does, you know, when you play a Beethoven symphony, um, people gather for that. But somehow there is something very individualistic in his music. And so I, I wonder how you, how you would put that together in a, in a community project or inspire a community project through it. You know, I, I have a thought about that. Um, so we had a session um, over Zoom, I think it was about a month ago now, that focused on Beethoven and and sort of sharing Beethoven as a person and his music um, with the broader Best Buddies community. I think we had, I forget how many people were on that Zoom call, but it, it was a bit of a chaotic <laughs> Zoom call. It was full, <laughs> which was great. Um, and so uh, Matt Decker, one of our percussion players and Danielle Kuhlman and I, um, one of our horn players, um, the three of us talked about our favorite Beethoven pieces that we shared with the group and played through Zoom. Um, and I shared some pictures from when I went to visit the Beethoven house in Bonn a few years ago, um, including a picture of his hearing, various hearing apparatuses and um, his little, baptismal cap, which a lot of people were really fascinated by. Um, so I think that that was where we got really into Beethoven, um, specifically with that community. Um, also, I thought what, what kind of helped them feel connected to Beethoven was um, learning about his, his struggles with hearing loss and that he, much of the music that he wrote and that we love today he wrote without ever being able to hear it actually played um, live. So I think that was, it, it's a pretty amazing thing. And I think that spoke to um, a lot of the participants in this project. It's like a journey and you do hear that in the music, uh, thinking about Beethoven five and um, the, the, um, the kind of the way that that piece starts is really f furious and, and, altogether moments with almost the whole orchestra and then and then for you Mary straight out of that is is the most amazing moment of solitude and real kind of you know there's nothing more alone than that than that oboe it must feel amazing to play that yeah that's definitely one of my favorite oboe moments <laughs> <laughs> so tell us uh, a little bit about what what people will see when they when they um, see this work, Chuck? Because um, we can't do it in June, but we are going to do it. And um, what's the experience of it? How do we? What's the journey, and how do we lead into those pieces, as you said, of uh, Beethoven four and five? Sure. Uh, so we had in one of the sessions when we were talking about creating musical form for the piece, uh, all our groups teamed up, we had three groups there that day, uh, and everybody made sort of a collage, writing down series of phrases or words that were meaningful. Uh, we had just taken a trip to the art museum, and so we were talking about visual art and how it connects to music, and we created these collages based on uh, things that we wanted to experience in the music, uh, images that we had seen from some of the exhibits at the art museum, and sort of putting all these ideas together and these three teams worked on these independently. And then when we went to share them through the group, we found that there were a lot of similar material that connected through all three of these pieces. Um, all three of the collages mentioned something about having fun. Two of the three mentioned something about um, helping one another, helping others, and how important that is to a sense of community. Uh, two of the three collages included imagery of fireworks. So there was a lot in terms of just thinking about it as a musical form, there were already things that show up in different places that return, that come back and have evolved when you see them the second time. Uh, so this became the structure of the piece and sort of the guideline. And since everybody was talking about 
having fun and building a community and a, a way of bringing people together, having an experience and leaving with a smile on your face. Uh, that's sort of what I wanted the piece to guide as well. And so there are sections that are uh, fairly bombastic, uh, higher paced, high energy dance type music, which was very important to many of our participants. Uh, and then there are also these moments of solitude and thinking of, you know, supporting one another, of helping your, your community and those around you, teaching one another. Uh, and it builds back at the end of the piece to material very similar to the beginning. And I see that as a way of connecting the journey that this piece was on to the journey of a full concert program and to lead into whatever may come next, in this case, Beethoven 4. Yeah. And was this, was this the first project like this that you'd done? Particularly, I'm thinking about the, way, the, the, the process of inclusion and, and trying to bring that, because it, it is, um, I guess it can be quite conf almost confronting right, to, to try and join together such different kinds of, uh, such different people and such different kinds of um, art reaction life together. How did, how did you feel about that? Yes, uh, I've never done a project like this before. It was, we had a session in January uh, after all of the workshop sessions where I went and composed, like furiously composed for a month and a half or something and sent excerpts, three one minute long fragments of the piece out to a subset of the symphony musicians to play through. And all the participants came to that. And uh, I've never been that nervous about hearing my own music played before because it was also everyone else's piece. Um, and I wanted to know that, you know, here's a theme that we definitely created as a group two and a half months ago. And are they going to remember it and still connect to it the same way that I would, because I've been listening to this theme every day since then. Uh, and we had an improvised session uh, in the beginning of, of our music creating, um, music creating workshop, where we did some uh, deep listening improvisation. And I took little elements from that, but that was a one-off thing that we did as a group, barely even knowing each other, not having discussed the material of the day. And I turned it into a lengthy segment of the piece and I wanted to know, will this still connect to everybody? Uh, and I was very relieved to find out that everybody was happy with the, what I had presented because it needed to be everyone's piece. Uh, despite the fact that I was the one putting the notes down on paper, the ideas had to connect to everybody, the material had to come from everybody. Uh, and fortunately, everyone was pleased with the, the direction the piece had gone in and moments that I thought would connect to certain individuals did connect to those individuals. So that was a really interesting moment for me, just as a composer trying to bring other people into the process and then hoping that where the process went on my own personal journey over such a long span that it still meant something. Uh, and, and to see everyone connect to it was really, uh, it was a pretty profound moment for me. For me as well. I was there for that reading session. And I mean, I didn't expect either, like to what degree would, would this really sound and feel like, like our piece, like this collective group, to what extent would it sound like there was that kind of representation in the music? And I was pretty amazed, Chuck. Um, I think you did an amazing job, um, including, I remember Thank this you. one section where, do you remember Michaela wanted something that sounded strong and weak at the same time? Absolutely. And there was that one section that I was like, oh my God, that's that, that's that, that's Michaela. <laughs> that's the strong and the weak section. Um, so it was, it was a pretty cool um, thing to see come to life for sure. Yeah. And so Mary, um, talk to me about um, what you hope a piece like this, I mean, that's a great story and kind of answers the question, but what, what a piece like that, what that kind of community composition can bring to the orchestra. Um, first of all, and then also the community. But l let's start with the orchestra, because that's a very interesting connection. Sure. Um, you know, for me, when I think about what's the role of a musician, what's the role of an orchestra, 
I think a primary role is we are storytellers. You know, it's, it's our job to go on stage and sometimes we're telling our own stories. Sometimes we're sharing our own emotions, creating our own sense of atmosphere for the audience. Sometimes we're sharing stories that, um, that reflect the life and experience of the composer or the emotion that we think the composer is trying to evoke. Other times I walk on stage and I'm sharing stories from other people. I'm sharing, referencing experiences that I've shared with other people or um, referencing aspects of another person's personality. Um, so that being said, I feel like the more we're able to really connect with people who are different from us on a deep level um, and, and to really get to know them, the better storytellers will be and the, the better musicians will be. Um, it's like developing a level of fluency um, with expression and with stories. Um, and thinking about what I would hope um, the participants in this project would gain, I'd hope that they would be able to walk into Benaroya Hall and feel at home, like, like not just welcome, but like they belong there and like they have a sense of ownership, um, hearing something that they wrote that really genuinely represents their voice and their ideas and their story um, being performed on this great stage. So it's <laughs> really sad that we're not able to do that right now, but I, I'm hopeful we will see this project through. <laughs> we will get there. Yes. And Chuck, how, how about you for the, for the orchestra and then I guess the community that, that, that we're part of? What does, a, what does a project like this and music like this, what, what are your hopes for the results out of that? I think it's an interesting, I don't know how different it is from other orchestra pieces. There's a lot of, if you look at other composers who have drawn on resources that are not necessarily their, uh, their own ideas for primary material for a piece, whether they do field work, um, of some kind or, or draw on collaborative creation. But getting something that was created by the community that is right outside of Benaroya Hall, uh, I think is pretty special. It's not just uh, a community of people somewhere, it's our community of people who are right here. Uh, people who, as we learned over the course of the workshop, have a great interest in music of all kinds. Um, and maybe for some of them, the symphonic music is new, and for some of them, it isn't. Uh, some of them would, as we were having these workshops, would rattle off a list of their favorite instruments and what pieces they like, and others were, you know, trying to figure out which instrument makes this sound. And so we have a community of people with all variety of musical backgrounds creating something together for their hometown orchestra to, to present. And I think that's a really unique experience uh, for an orchestra to get to be part of that. And then to connect it to the community. Uh, again, I don't know how aware the Seattle Symphony audience is of the people in their community who have disabilities and are trying to be part of this orchestral community right now through this workshop project. And so I think it will open up maybe some some new avenues for the audience of the symphony and for the Northwest Center and Best Buddies to sort of find a new way to interact. And not only can Best Buddies connect to people in the orchestra, but also to the supporters of the orchestra and the audience who uh, comes to so many of these subscription programs. Well, thank you so much. I really can't wait to hear this piece now. It's an inspiring story and, and it sounds like a real journey that you've that you've gone on to bring it to us um thank you for talking about it chuck and mary and um and uh, can't wait to hear it thank you so much thank you i remember coming to some of the workshops and seeing the two of you 
play some music together and play yeah. with a little xylophone and some other instruments. Yeah. What was that? How did what was what was fun about that? Um, tell tell us a little bit about what that was like. Um. Is your enjoyable? Is it yeah. adorable? Adjo enjoyable. Oh, enjoyable. I'm sorry. Yeah. What was your favorite of instrument? Um, the violin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's your favorite instrument overall. Yeah. But of the ones when you did the composing, what was your favorite instrument? The jingle bell. <laughs> yeah, and remember the composer, he added some jingle bells. That was all her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yay. So when you hear jingle Yay. bells in your piece, yeah. you can think, yeah. that's me, I did that. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, I liked playing the xylophone with you because yeah. we sort of tag-teamed it, right? Like yeah. you had one mallet and I had the other. And yeah. yeah. 